คิดว่ายังไงลูกคิดว่าผมชนะครับแต่ว่าคือบ้านเขาครับคือบ้านเขาโอ้ยมิติ้งฮีกันแบบมีวินิ่งบัตรอิสอิเตฮีโฮมทาวเดมโฮมทาวยูโนอีบอบคอร์ดเยอะสุดเองเยอะ Do you want to fight him again Yes. Yeah, I want to yeah. see it. I want to see that fight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining us. All the best. Go back and get focused. Focused. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Chungi. Chungi. Thank you so much for interpreting us. All right. Interpreting. Interpreting. You like that word? It was a new word. It was a new word that I just Wait, had right. to what did, what did, uh, Kevin Ross dropped a new word too, though. Documentarian. Documentarian. Yeah. You know. Um, It's funny, we're talking about all the Muay Thai fighters we have, but we also have a lot of MMA stars that are here as well, uh, that are coming to the event as well. It's not just Muay Thai fighters. Remember, every, of, every, 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 every fight, every, every fight, and it gets more and more and more. We see more of the MMA guys. A lot of these guys, how many of these guys trained Muay Thai strictly before they got into MMA, Joey? Oh, tons. What you say? Tons. Right. Just as many, you know, like kickboxing, well, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You, you got to look at it like this way. We're in uh, the second evolution of mixed martial arts. So right now you've got these young guys who started off well-rounded, but before that everyone came from a particular background. Right. So really, it's like 25% of people were wrestlers, uh, 25% were, were jiu-jitsu guys, 25% were, uh, were Muay Thai guys. You know, that's boxers. Boxers, you know, right? Like yeah. Yourself. So so tons, 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 and tons of modern mixed art, mixed martial arts started. Their first martial art was Muay Thai kickboxing. And speaking of MMA stars that have come for the second time on the MMA Fight Corner, Keith Jardine is joining us right now. The Dean of Me. The Dean of Me and Keith Jardine. How are you doing, doing guys? He's actually the, one of the nicest guys in the world, too. Oh, so that's not true at all. <laughs> so, so what's that, going on, Keith? What are you up to? Man, I'm crazy busy. Like, um, I can't tell you. I've been home for like three days in the last month. Um, My, my fiance fought in, uh, in Invicta. She won a fight there. So I was oh, out here for a week. Congratulations. And I got the opportunity right away to leave right to Hawaii for about a week and a half for Hawaii 5 0. Oh, uh, uh, I love yeah. it. More acting. I love it. Yeah, I'm doing as much as I can. In fact, um, uh, that's what I've been doing all week. I've been doing these silly auditions. And um, I come out here for this. And then now. Monday, I'm going to do an audition for a Nickelodeon show. Nick, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. going to get signed? What the, yeah. What's funny is I was just going to ask, uh, have you been getting typecast in a certain way? But, you know. You know, a little bit, but I did this one thing, and I encourage everybody to look at it because it is so funny. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's called uh, Enter the Dojo on YouTube. And, and I'm on uh, uh, season, uh, season two, episode four, and, and I did this little thing that was totally br breaks my character and everything. And, and I did this thing for free for these guys. These guys are awesome, and it really is the funniest show I've ever seen. It should be on TV, and it, it, they're working on that. Anyways, so ever since people, I've been sending this pit, this video out, and people people have been hiring me, giving me uh, auditions and everything, just from this one little thing I did for free. So it's awesome. Very cool. Very the dojo season two, you said. Season two, episode four, called Imperfect Weapons. It is hilarious. I, I'm gonna, I'm leading towards. You're gonna be the most successful MMA fighter turned actor. I don't know about that, but 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 I'm. <laughs> I don't know. Have you seen yeah, some of the movies <laughs> that, they, that, that they've made? I've been in some pretty bad movies myself. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> what, are your what are your thoughts on oh, well, I shouldn't say that. I've been in some awesome movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to come up here there, yeah. Keith. Yeah. You know? But what are your thoughts on some of the movies that are coming out? Like Warrior came out, and then there was the new movie with Kevin James that came out. What was it? And was I don't, I don't know. It was cool. I didn't see it. It was cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Don't be a hater. Yeah, it was, it was I fun. didn't see it. Boss was hilarious. The show was... It was. Did you watch it, Keith? Nah, sorry, man. Ah, I know he feels me. He feels me. Yeah. Ah, don't be, a, don't be, a, don't be a snob. Don't be a prima donna, you two. Hey, I can't be a snob. You just see some of these MMA movies out there. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> they're bad. No, yeah. listen, they were back down 12. <laughs> First yeah. off, the other night I, I'm falling asleep in bed and I'm and I'm flipping the channels and who do I see on TV? Stefan Bonner in a movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, and for not only is he in a movie, the dude's got a love scene with some yeah. chick, okay? What? And yeah, like, I, I I, had run out of the room because I had to tell my girlfriend to turn on the TV because she was going to laugh. I thought you were saying you ran out of the room to throw so up. So I don't know, no, I don't know <laughs> if, it, if it actually went down, it got down to the, the nitty-gritty yeah, and there was some nudity, but he was totally in bed with a love scene with some girl. And my girlfriend's watching it in the other room, and I'm falling asleep watching the movie, and all I hear is her laughing. I'm like, what? Next morning, I'm like, was that a comedy? Not at all. It, it was funny, though. <laughs> really yeah, funny. Yeah. Like, you know, so. It, I, that, that's a quality. I, I did a couple movies up, there, movies up there with Steve Austin. 
And those were actually weren't bad movies, but but it's the same kind of genre as that. It's big, we're straight to video kind of stuff. You two as brothers. Yeah, you two as. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say you guys work well together. Hey, you know what? You, you just you, right away, man. You just do whatever you do to get get dialogue out there and get practice. And and, and, and now like I'm moving up to to the next level with uh, I did a thing on Longmire, Breaking Bad. Uh, I'm doing as much as I Wait, can. Wait, did you say you did Breaking Bad? Well, a small little thing. I got beat up by the fat uh, sheriff. Oh, that kills me. I'll go on about this forever. Um, I did a little stunt thing uh, for Breaking Bad, my favorite show of all time. The, the stunt corner called me to do a little stunt. I, got, I, I just deal drugs or something, get beat up by, by the DEA guy. And uh, me and another guy get beat up to make it worse. <laughs> anyway, anyways. So, so then uh, I had a couple more auditions. Oh, in the bar. He yeah, comes, yeah. He comes in the bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Like he just right. decides to pick a fight. Like, it, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that killed me, man. I, I, got, I got some um, awesome roles. I, I got auditions. I got callbacks. I'm with the director. They love me, this and that. It's going to work out. It didn't work out twice. And I talked to the stunt coordinator uh, just a little while ago. I'm talking about it. And it's cause it conflicted. they thought it conflicted with the other little stupid little role I did. Uh, but but they remember they thought, like that one little yep. scene they might yep. remember that you were there before absolutely there are, there are people out there that would probably call that out though yeah, like yeah. dude no way he, he got yeah. his ass kicked a couple months ago there are guys that, are, to him. that work on productions that's their job is yeah. to make sure that everything's yeah. fluent yeah so that's something they would definitely that's it you and, one and small scene it could, could if you guys don't mind getting more. carried away with it talking about this I'll tell you man like doing auditions that's really something it's tough like, like I'm not doing like I'm doing I'm going the real route I'm not doing like just things I get picked for hey we want Keith and this like I'm showing up with my with my lines on audition and, and there's sides I do with my sides and there's a hallway of people that man their job their li- livelihood depends on getting this role and they're all, stink it, you've done that you've done I do it now oh, I did it now, yeah, yeah. you're all standing in the hallway and they're yeah. walking around like I said, don't do it, Veronica. <laughs> I said, don't do it, Veronica. And that's the worst. I said, don't do it, Veronica. That's, that's, it. that's the worst part, though, because then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, is he doing it better than I've been doing Oh, and somebody has your own rule? Yeah, oh, my gosh. Oh, and you hear them in the room before yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you, actually, no, uh, when, when I was in high school, I did some stuff, and, you know, I did some off-Broadway theater, and I actually tried out for a commercial, okay? It, it, it was, um, it, I think it was an Oxy or, you know, some kind of Clearex commercial. The dude that got it was Danny Masterson from that 70s show. Oh, sure. So do you know how many times I look at that kid and I'm like, what if that was me? Yeah. Mother... But I don't have <laughs> hair, hair as cool as well, that. It's kind of like competition, too, which is kind of what you're used to. Well, that's, what, that's what I was getting to. It's almost the same way, almost the same warming up in the locker room. And you're up, you, you got your game plan, or whatever you want to do, the lines are just perfectly before you're right in there. You, like when you're, you know you're on deck, you know, and it's, it's the uh, same thing. I walked into an audition once, and there were some other big, real big names that were sitting there. And I walked in, I had just did a show with one of the partners from a television show, which will remain nameless. But it was just, I, oh, I was just on a show with so-and-so, so-and-so. And the guy was like, I guess, oh, yeah. I guess, all right, oh, we're going to have that now. It's a competition. Yeah. Name drop right. it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I get it. But, yeah. yeah. But you actually walk in the room, and, 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 you know, it's not as intense, but there's a sense of nerves. Right. Like, right oh. before you walk in and when you get in there, you're trying to, you know, there, there's a certain mind frame and a psychology of competition. Absolutely. You know, relax, be in the moment, you know, don't try to force it, you know. And, and you almost have to do the same sort of psychological techniques to, to, to get ready for your audition and to perform in your audition. You're absolutely right. I was doing one uh, a couple weeks ago, and, uh, like, I, I almost, like, I, I, I froze up. And it was just like a fight, like a... Like it, it gets so quiet, you hear your own voice, and, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I, I pull it together, pull it together, get through it. Or you know, right? cough, your arms are sweating, yeah, yeah, yeah. soaking, you're like, can you yeah. hear my heart beating? Yeah. Just imagine all the casting agents naked. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be, he's gonna be halfway through his thing, forget his lines for a second, and then remember, and then you're gonna look down, and Keith just got a little friendly guy sticking out his pants. <laughs> no, you need to hire a hot like, cat. No, <laughs> what are you saying? What are you saying? A couple of hot girls. Yeah. No, okay, Keith, Keith, you hire Burt Watson to walk into every audition with you. That's it. We roll it, Keith. We, we roll, roll it. Time. That's exactly the way you feel too. Right, let's go do it. Let's go do it. Put your size down. Get up. Right, here you go. Ah, that's I, it. I remember the very first time I saw him walking a fighter out in the back and I heard the way he was talking to him and uh, what he, it was oh my god like I want to go out there yeah, and yeah, get my ass yeah. kicked in but I'd like to do it right now yeah yeah are, are you is it a rap fighting no no I'm um Man, there's a whole other conversation. I don't know how much time you got. <laughs> we got, got a couple, couple minutes. minutes. Let's go. Let's go. Um, you know, a lot of people have been pushing me to retire, man. I, I've been a shell of myself for these last couple of years. And uh, 
And I, I've been saying, like, I'm definitely on the shelf. I'm semi-retired. I'm definitely on the shelf right now. And I've just been looking at my health and, and fitness and, and the way I've been approaching things. I've been just doing things way wrong. I'm educating myself so much. I've been doing this bulletproof stuff. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Bulletproof Executive, but it's just my nutrition was, was backwards. My working out was backwards. And I was a zombie walking around for the last two two. Uh, years. So, so that's my approach right now is I'm trying to get myself healthy. And then once I feel like I'm ready to go out and perform the level I want to and shock the world, I want to do it. I got to do it again. I don't care if I win or lose, but I just want to go out there and, and perform BK Jardine, which I haven't been in the last couple of years. I, when that dropped to middleweight, it was a disaster. It was stupid. It made everything even worse. It, it magnified all my, my health issues I was dealing with. But um, And I'm trying to spread that to the world, to, to everybody, too, like with this nutritionist that I'm, I'm discovering. I, I got my own fitness studio. Uh, TRX Fitness Studio back back in Albuquerque, and um, I'm just kind I'm just kind of make everybody feel better. Once you start feeling a little bit better in your day to day life, you get obsessed with it. You like if I do this little bit, and I can feel that much better. What what if I do this? Yep. Yeah, and, and it's just it's, it's kind of like, it's my gospel right now. Now let me ask you this then, just get, getting uh, a heart to heart serious. Yeah. Um. So you know, a, a, as a student of the game and watching the game, there's always been kind of this rule in combat that when when someone does get knocked out, or, or you know, and it happens to the, the best of them. From Chuck Liddell had the iron chin, and then he finally got caught. Um, but it's like that point at, at which they get they, 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 they get separated from consciousness. It becomes a little easier, you know, the next time. And then when it happens again, it seems like it's it's a progress or not a progression, a degression, where it's almost easier for, for them to get caught just because the button's been hit or the, or the wire's been shorted so you know like they had the, the greatest chin in the history of, of fighting that you know they took the greatest punches um, but then slowly after a while with with all things the, 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 it kind of just erodes and and becomes less durable and more susceptible to this and, and you 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 know you caught a couple yeah. punches yourself do, do, does that play in the back of your mind do you think that that, that is uh, a true thing and, and it could be serious I agree with you there is something there and have you, have you looked at um, football players transitioning over to MMA? They don't they don't seem to fare so well that way either. Um, one, one thing with fighters though, and the main thing I'm sure I'm sure it's going to hold you with everybody. Like I was so stupid uh, back then. Um, I remember I fought Houston Alexander, and I got caught in that fight. I was next back in the gym the fall, exact following week helping Rashad train, just getting hit in the back of the head and and all that stuff. And like, whoa, this doesn't feel quite right. Like I'm, I knew I wasn't quite right and. Uh, but nobody was telling me not to. I was like, hey, look at Keith. He's doing a good job. He's the hardest worker in the gym. He's in there training. Well, no. Someone needed to send me home. Wait, wait, wait a second. Aren't you just said that you, because you, you got knocked out by Houston, okay? Yeah. Aren't you not supposed to have physical contact? For 60 days. For 60 days what? under doctor's rules? Or well, that's what just they say. So you just but like Greg you, wasn't enforcing that? Or who, not Greg. I didn't even well, just, him just, just, yeah. no, no one at the gym was enforcing that? No, nobody enforces that. Nobody cares. That means you can't fight uh, for, uh, say, 60 days. So you can't fight for... I don't know, 75 days. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, I, I, uh, it's funny right, because right, we, yeah. we had that situation a couple of months ago where Demarcus Johnson got knocked out. I'm not, yeah, he got knocked out cold by Mike Swick, and then he was still technically under doctor's suspension, and he took a fight yeah. uh, against uh, that Gunnar Nelson guy and got submitted and got caught. I mean, he shouldn't have even been in the tr gym training. So you think... Uh, this is something that all fighters are doing. They ignore these doctors. Absolutely, I, I see it all the time. And, and, and even if you've been in a, not even knocked out, just been in a tough fight, like, you don't need to be sparring and going 100%. You should be working on your technique and working on your, on your, your um, fitness and, and different things like that. But, yeah, it was me. It was all, all kinds of people. And, and you always get praised for it. Like, again, like, look at that guy, man. Like, he just fought and he's back to work. Uh, that guy's a real warrior, you know. But, no, that's <laughs> not, not the way to do it. Um, yeah, so there you go. Wow, that's that's crazy. You right. know, looking back now, you would do it completely different, though, huh? Well, you, you never want to change things because I might not be where I'm at right now, but uh, yeah, uh, learn. Yeah, but like, like I've learned so much, but but definitely, like if it happened to me now, I'd do it a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, either way, we look forward to you to seeing you in another movie. Uh, Wherever, or hopefully yeah. back in the cage sometime. Definitely, it's always been a pleasure watching you. I mean, Thanks, Keith guys. Jardine, you got victories over quite a few former UFC champions. Quite a few, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 good to to see you still kicking it, and uh, season, definitely love to see you in the one season, season two. You season two. two. Season season two. two. Season and training. Two. Any yeah. work with any fighters that you want to promote or talk about real quick before we go off? Man, just the fighters. I got all kinds of fighters fighting. Uh, uh, what tomorrow? Uh, Saturday night. Uh, John Dodson, uh, Cowboys yeah. around. Yeah. Uh, all right. Clay Guida, man. All 
all these guys are awesome. Sick fight card tomorrow night. We're gonna start talking Mark about that in a TV. minute. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. Yeah. How, how, how yeah. has the past two months been amazing? When I hear yeah. people complaining about UFC events, I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. They're giving you some of the greatest fight cards for free right now on yeah. Fox. Dude. Not only that, on FX, Fuel, everything else. But Billy, we had amazing. Bellator started up again last week. The last Fuel or the FX card last week. Fox card tomorrow night. Next week you have the Super Bowl card. Edgar and Aldo, Fitch and Maya. You got Edgar so many Aldo, great. What a fight. Oh, I'm yeah, just yeah. so excited for what's going on right We're now. Just, yeah. Keith, thanks so much. we got to take a break right now. Unfortunately, we thanks so much for joining us. And always come back here and join us in the MMA Fight Corner. Anytime you want, man. Thanks, guys. <laughs> right. I'll thanks see so you much. tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. We urge everybody watching on Ustream right now, we're going to take a little bit of a break. Come down here to the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. See live fights, Muay Thai. Eight happening at the Hard Rock tonight, no and see some no MMA superstars walking around as well, and come and hang with us. Stitch we'll Duran coming up Stitch next. Stitch Duran's coming up. Daniel Cormier is going to be joining us later as well when we go live on Fox. And we'll see you in a little bit. Fox Sports Radio on Ustream, MMA Fight Corner.
undercard fights featuring Mickey Bay Jr. and U.S. Olympian Joseph Jojo Diaz in separate matchups. Don't miss this night of legendary boxing at the most unique resort on the Strip. For tickets, visit CosmopolitanLasVegas.com. Text the keyword LVH to 69187 for your chance to win. A free two-night stay at the LVH Las Vegas Hotel and Casino and join the mobile club. That's the keyword. LVH with no spaces to the number 69187. To win a two-free night stay. Messaging and data rates may apply. He walks outside, gets arrested, goes to jail. It sucks. Sees the jailers, calls good fellas, bail bonds at 384-JAIL. He's out of jail. He gets a ride home, a free t-shirt. Never in the history of bail bonds has I seen anyone get out so fast. Good fellas, bail bonds at 384-JAIL. Forget about it. Good fellas, bail bonds at 384-JAIL. Good fellas, bail bonds at 384-JAIL. Not all polluting vehicles smoke, but you can be sure all smoking vehicles pollute. Report smoking vehicles at 642 Smog. That's 642-7664. Help keep Nevada's air clean by making a hands-free call for clean air. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go with Two minutes, guys, two minutes. Hey, thank you very much for that Fox commercial. Fox TV, go to MMAFightCorner.com <laughs> ah, for all the latest MMA you gotta reason this and the most exclusive you gotta interviews do, you gotta do them all as with your favorite fighters. fighters. That's MMA Fight Corner. Did we speak about Bellator yet? Nope. No. Nos no hablamos de Bellator. Was anybody impressed with King Mo? The radio show here on Fox no, Sports Radio. Really but I want to tell you about a great gym right here. Propose, you know, he's going to get into way better shape. Well, the right. no, the kid actually was good. Cole Small, Cole Small was good. Yeah, he was. I didn't like the way he looked. At, I mean, I didn't like the way he didn't go in for the kill after the punch. I, I, I don't he looked composed, I, man. He looked I, sharp, I, I thought. I've just never been a fan of Mo keeping his hands down. No, it, it, it makes me nervous. Somebody that can throw is probably going to catch him. It definitely makes me nervous because that dude had some power last night, and he could have hurt Mo. Well, I was disappointed that you and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. Huh? I hope so. Hey, this is Rashad Evans. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Divide, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! Hello, everybody. Welcome to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920, live from the Hot Rock Hotel and Casino uh, here in Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Billy Mira, and as always, joined by my partners, Phil Devine and Joey Varner. And uh, we have a very, very, very special show for you tonight. We are live from the Lion Fight Muay Thai show here at the Hot Rock. Uh, we want to start off by saying anybody out there listening to us, within listening distance right now, you have to come to the Hot Rock. Amazing event happening tonight uh we have daniel cormier who's going to be joining us later in the show about 5 30 but uh right now on the fight card tonight we are lucky enough to have tiffany van Sus, who's th thank you graciously joined us before her fight tonight i hope we're not breaking your concentration at all tiff no not at all just another day at the office oh real quick okay real quick because he started off doing it now, okay 
Does he have your permission? Are you cool people calling you Tiff? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, damn. Yeah. We were so... Because, okay, when you, you, we, did an interview, <laughs> we did an interview with Tiffany uh, on Tuesday night, and when we got off the air, he said, okay, da -da -da, thanks, Tiff, and then hung up, and Phil and I were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Do you have the right to call her Tiff? Right? Right? That's, that's like some girls named Jennifer hate being called Jen or a girl named, you know... Jen hates being called Jennifer or something like that. So we were so we were hoping you weren't cool that you were gonna kick him, but I guess I, I could kick him anyway later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I'm counting on. Kick him. Yeah. I got right someone now. else to kick first. So yeah. 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 you didn't have to wait, Billy. No, that was a total respect <laughs> thing too. You know, so when I oh. called it Tiff, you know, I'm sure Tiffany. You well, know, the Twitter, so the Twitter is Tiff yeah, Time Bomb. Yeah, the Twitter is so. Tiff Time Bomb. So I mean, I think by default, automatically. Yeah, it's, may, it's may, cool. Yeah, so you know what happened when you assume. Oh, yeah, stop. you put the ass in you. And you yeah, yeah, right. You make good ass of you and me. That's an old odd couple thing. Yeah. But you said, you know, we were talking to you earlier in the week. You were on the show. You joined us. And you said that you, your, your nickname is Time Bomb. Yeah. Right? But you don't like that nickname. I didn't. You didn't. At first. At first. But now I just kind of like accepted it and it kind of it's my my ring persona uh, i right. guess i guess so i mean i'm cool with it now all right all right well we'll call you tiff we'll, we'll keep the time bomb out of it you know even though you've, you've kind of embraced it a little bit yeah but let's get into what's happening here tonight you're getting ready to fight how excited are you getting ready now we're a couple hours away from showtime what's going through your head nothing right now i mean i'm, I'm just chilling i'm cool <laughs> i'm relaxed i'm mellow you know all the hard work is done, and uh, it's time to go out and have some fun. Are you always just relaxed before a fight? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, always. Yeah, is that leading all the way up until you, when you walk out and the music's playing and the entrance goes, you're completely relaxed and composed? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and um, up until the commission uh, tapes my gloves, I have like a little, a couple minutes where I'm just like, oh man, oh man, oh man, why do I do this? Why do I do this? Okay, <laughs> just calm down, calm down, calm down. And then all of a sudden something just switches and just pure calm like I'm I'm me in my purest form I'm in my element and and I'm just I'm just ready to go out there and, and do what I love to do uh -huh. do, you ha do you have any rituals you have to do to kind of keep you relaxed oh or yeah have there's, turn a, the there's a whole list they start after the weigh-in yeah 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 so give it give it to us uh, after the weigh-in I have to eat my meal and then after my meal I have to have one Heineken okay one Heineken it's really? to, uh, in I play video poker a little bit and then uh, I have to have a Toll House cookie sandwich Okay. Yeah, after my meal. The ice cream sandwich. The ice cream sandwich. Those are bomb. Oh, my gosh. They're heaven. I can't go into a, to watch the movies when I'm trying to stay healthy because I can't go to movie theater without getting a popcorn, a hot dog, and an ice cream, a Toll House ice cream sandwich. Oh, uh, it's the best. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's the best. After that, you know, I sleep like a baby, and, you know, I'm just, it's just, that's my thing. I have to do it every single time. And then fight day, uh, I go shopping. Really? Yeah. Do, for, you know, is there anything in particular you always shop for, or is it just kind of shopping in general? Shopping in general, but uh, this time I bought some shoes and a cute top. Nice. Yeah, so. The shoes and top probably match, huh? Of course. That's just of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so surreal to hear that. You know, yeah, I was out buying some nice shoes, a cute little top, matches so well. <laughs> and now I'm going to go into the KR ring and just beat on someone for three hours. <laughs> it's just, it's a little surreal. So you're in a real good place right now mentally, and that's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Now, how are you excited about tonight's fight being broadcast on Axis Television? Oh, it's huge. I am, I'm so stoked. I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words, actually. Right. This is yeah. basically historic. Yeah. I mean, in two different ways. This is their first broadcast on Axis Television, and you're also the first women signed to Lion Fight. Yeah. Good girl, so. That, that, must, that? Feel, that actually must feel really good, though, to actually be in a contract where you, you know when that you're going to be got another fight coming up and that this is going to be a continuous thing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in the past, getting fights and, and knowing that I've had fights for sure, it has been pretty difficult, but with, with this opportunity that I've been given by Lion Fight, um, you know, I know that I'm going to have fights this year, so it's it's definitely uh, something that keeps me motivated even more so than normal, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. But you you got to really feel honored as well in that, that Scott Kent and Lion fight, fight Promotions have a lot of faith in you because you're on a card here with... with you know, three Thai three, three legends. Yeah. You know, you've yeah. got Dawson Klein, arguably the greatest Thai fighter of his generation. You've got Kevin Ross, the greatest kickboxer to come out of North America and making his name internationally, almost, you know, controversially losing to Sanchai, which was an amazing fight oh, yeah, before he huge. got hurt. And then also Malapet on the card. And you're the co-main event. I mean, what does that do? Does that, does that put the pressure on you? Does it give you confidence? I mean, how does that make you feel? It gives me confidence for sure, and uh, and I feel like it's a great opportunity to show the world, um, you know, Muay Thai and and female fighters in general. So um, I'm I'm very very blessed and thankful for the opportunity, and 
you know, I'm I'm not going to waste it. It's definitely going to be be something to look forward to. Hell yeah. Absolutely. And if you could say something to the fans right now, you're going to put on a great show. If the fans listening, like I said, I cannot say this enough. If you're listening right now, you're in distance, get down here. Hurry up. Get you over hear, here. You hear it from Tiffany herself. She's saying, get down here and watch the fight. She's going to have a great fight tonight. So, yeah, I'm really excited and, of course, naturally excited about just the way the women have been coming on lately. I mean, yeah, you guys definitely. are really. It's almost like, I don't know, should the men be scared that you guys are going to take over shortly or what? Oh, totally. <laughs> Girl power. Girl power. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> no, you know what? <laughs> you actually, though, uh, uh, very cute woman fighter and that that, that, that that definitely helps you know because it makes you marketable you know and it's like you had Gina Carano before she yep. made the transition to, to MMA but she was you know a very very attractive MMA fighter or, or kickboxer and then before her you had Lucia Riker oh, she's you know one of my she, that's favorites. actually who my dog is named after oh, really? my, my, one of my, my Bruno's pit is named after Lucy, Lucy, Lucy after Lucia Riker but, awesome. um, you know you're kind of on that pathway to be held in those same esteems to even be lumped in the same category with those names is uh, I have to pinch myself you know it's still like I don't know if it's fully hit me yet but I mean it, it's surreal and I'm just wow I'm, I, I'm just thankful thankful and, and just stoked like stoked yeah. I love it <laughs> yeah it's great uh, you know and who knows what's going to happen and we could be talking about you in the next year is all over the place so I just want to know right now being that we have you on the show that you'll always come back to the MMA fight corner and join us here Always, you guys are awesome. As long as you keep singing, as long as you keep doing your impressions, I'll come back. <laughs> you are the first person on earth to, to want me to keep singing. Maybe we'll do a duet together. Let's do it. I'm, I, hey, I was we can. I was in Greece. I was in the play Greece. I was Danny Zuko. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we could do the. Uh, summer you know, loving. I got. You. Oh yes. Have me a How blast. How did you in a production when you can't even sing? Well, well, no, I wanted to be Kaniki so bad. I thought he was the coolest. Yo, he you know, you know, I swear, you know, so mad that it. they gave me Danny Zuko. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. And it was like, it's the lead and I'm like nah man I want Kaniki and the kid they gave Kaniki actually like was he a nerd no okay oh. he was a he was a gangster actually his brother well, was, was, was in high school check this out though his brother was in high school was like three years older than me and him and uh, him and I got in a fight uh, on the on the playground like uh, <laughs> on the basketball courts like two months before right and so then he's like the yard, yard, the, 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 the School officials were coming to break it up and everything, so we're like, fine, we'll meet here after school. So we meet after school, and his he shows up with his brother and all his boys, and they oh, jump me. They beat the crap out of me. Wait a second. Was this thing? a kindergarten play? No, this is uh, uh, eighth grade. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> you just sitting here talking they, about they, eighth grade play. You I thought this was like last month. Crap out of me. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I had to do a play with this guy the whole time. Oh, bummer. Thanks yeah. for that great story. Just taking you down memory lane. Cool, cool story, bro. Thank you. You know what? Don't get jumped. Okay, story. You know Good so, job. Right, and you know what they say, Joey? A hickey from Kanicki is like a Hallmark card. He cares enough to send right. the very best. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> Tiffany, thanks so much for joining us. Thank like you for I said, me. I, I'm sure we're going to see great things from you tonight. You definitely will. And we want to have you back in the future as well. I'll be back. All the best, Tiff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, I'm doing my impressions for you now, all right? You know, <laughs> you know, thanks so much, all right? That's Thank a good you know, Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, all right. All right. It's, it's crazy. It's good. It's all right. You know, and, and it's a crazy show here we have here tonight because we've got so many people dropping by. we got, you know, Stitch Duran is also, uh, I see him in the distance. Where, where is Stitch? St- Stitch is coming by in a second. Whoa, whoa, what happened to Stitch? He'll be here in a second. He's been, you know, he's a busy man, and you've been kind of beating around the bush trying to get him on, so. <laughs> oh, he was sitting there the whole he came, time. He came, we've been here since 3.30 doing this, you know, getting everybody pumped up for the fights. We're all excited. Stitch has been here waiting. Billy finally decides to put him on, and he's, he's <laughs> yeah, when he ran to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, did he run to the bathroom? No, I don't know. Hey, Jake. Jake. So, hey, Jake, go, grab, go grab Stitch while, out while, of the bathroom. While they're going to get Stitch. While they're going to get Stitch, um, before we talk about the UFC tomorrow night, which is a, a sick free card on Fox TV, there, we had Bellator last night and King Mo, Joey. What would you think about King Mo's performance in Bellator last night? I, I thought he looked good, man. I thought he looked relaxed. He was, he was composed. He was patient. You know, I know he kind of does the, 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 the shoulder roll, one hand, kind of uh, parry style of defending. But, you know, I, I think he's... he's, he's done well with that thus far and the, the thing I liked about the most is he's had so much time off but how composed how relaxed he was you know he, he, he established a good jab he waited he looked for his opportunities you know when he landed that nice little turnover short right you know I, I, I was very impressed 
Very impressed. What, what was your impression of the Ben Askren Carl Amasu fight? As to be expected. It went no, no different than I thought it would, except that it ended in the third round. Had the, had the cut not happened, you know, of course, I think it would have been a five. I predicted a five round ground and pound. Five round or ground and pound? Yeah. You see how much trash Amasu was talking before that fight, well, too? Listen, listen when, you, when you're in a position like Amasu, okay, and let's be honest, Ben Askren in, has been known to not be. You know, the the showstopper, not to go out there and put on a show for the fans. He did dish out a beating on Amasu last night, but it, it, it was probably the most exciting that we've seen Ben Askren in a while actually going for the finish and not just worrying about control. You know, well, you know what it was? He's finally finding the flow with his elbows. Th those were some vicious he, he elbows. We haven't seen that. You know what? I'll tell you what, though. Very surprised. If, if he ever hit me with an elbow like that. I'm a Sue. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm a Sue. You see what I did there? Shut it up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. Well, those elbows were amazing, though. I mean, that, that was a game changer. And if he could, good luck tonight. If, if he can keep doing that, and, and if he can keep growing with that and, and utilizing those in his game plan, he can take what has been perceived as a boring style and make it entertaining. You know, because when you when you take top position on a person and you control them, eh, and you land a little hammer fist in there, eh, but when you can posture and effectively rain violent elbows that cut people open, that snap their head back off the mat, now you've taken a boring style and you've made it exciting and entertaining, and that's exactly what Ben Askren did last night. Yeah, there was one point during that fight, I think it was in the, th the towards the end of the third round before they stopped it, where I'm like, okay, is Amasu crying right now? He, he like looked like he was on on his back, crying, but you couldn't tell because his eyes were so, so bloody. Shut. They were just so just nasty, just brutally battered. Okay, and now to take nothing away from Ben's performance, of course, Amasu didn't make his job hard for him by keeping a close no, guard. Not at all. If they open it up, you've got stitch, and you 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 of course the master uh, the uh, great of, stitch of, Duran. of of Jordan stitch Duran joining us, our uh, MMA fight corner Come brother. Um, uh, but uh, you know when you've got someone raining down on you uh, with elbows and punches from top position, the last thing you want to do is have a close guard because they can just stay there and punch you. You want to open that guard up and use your legs to help create the space, right? Uh, you want to try to get out of there, man. You know, no sense taking unnecessary punches or, or elbows in this uh, situation. And uh, elbows do create a lot of work for me, brother. And yeah, <laughs> they absolutely. They keep you busy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Keep them in business. <laughs> Did you get to see the uh, the Bellator call last night? No, I didn't. You know, and uh, but you know, I just want to let you guys know is that you know I have my new line of tape, the Stitch Premium tape. But Bellator were the first guys to to actually use it. And, uh, you know, got to give credit to Dean Lazardo. Uh, Tim came in on Monday, Tuesday, he ordered a bunch, and they used it for the first time uh, on Bellator, you know. So, That's awesome. Uh, and where can everyone get this? Uh, it's going to be available in another week at stitchpremium.com. Excellent. Stitchpremium.com. Stops, stops any cut right here. All you have to do is put it up your head, it stops the cut. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's try it on there. We're talking about albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give Billy a shot, man. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Joe. This, this is my night. <laughs> Tiffany's going to kick him. I'm going to elbow him. There we go. And I'll patch him up. There we go. Cool. <laughs> now, uh, now, Stitch, of course, we're talking about the Bellator card that happened last night, but we have an amazing fight card coming up tomorrow night. Oh, UFC on Fox. What is this? What, what's the number of this now? This six. is UFC on Fox six, 6. And six. I have to tell you, for, for a free fight card, you, you, can't, you couldn't ask for more. I mean, this is a pay-per-view quality card here. I mean, Demetrius Johnson and Ja Dotson, the, the, quite possibly the last time we see Rampage. Right. Uh, Cerrone and Pettis, two of the top 140, uh, 155ers in the world. So, I mean, it's going to be a great fight. And the prelims, too. They're off the charts. When you got Clay Guida and Aoki on the <laughs> undercard, I mean, you're talking about a straight-up good card. That's a pretty serious card. And, you know, I wish I was going to be there. Unfortunately, I was scheduled to work with Andre Ward tomorrow night, but he ended up having a yes. shoulder injury. And, uh, and, you know, they already booked somebody for Chicago. So here I am uh, with you guys. So, you know, there is a God after all, man. Chicago's loss is it's, not a game. It's yeah. too cold anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Look, I'm wearing, we're, we're wearing no jackets, yeah. you know, just, just shirts. Yeah, man. That's why we say, everybody, even if you're not in Vegas right now, get on like a jet plane and immediately get here. You have to come. Because it's warm here. If you're in Chicago right now, you're not, you have until tomorrow night to watch the fight. You come down here and hang out 
to Con Rock. Are you looking forward to the fights here tonight as well, the line fights? No, no, absolutely. You know, it's been a long time uh, since I've been to an actual Muay Thai fight, and uh, it's kind of nice just to kind of get back into the old roots, you know. And, and uh, you know, I was telling Luke here, it was great because De La Hoya has his way, had his way in a while ago, so it was a big reunion for me to see a lot of the boxing guys, and, and now I see guys like Saksan and Yuki, the old veterans from the old days when I was in kickboxing, and so it's a, it's a family reunion type of atmosphere for me. Yeah, Stitch came up to me before and he goes, this is like a, a double family reunion. I'm, yeah. I'm reunited with you guys, and I get to see all my old friends as well yeah. here with the boxing community. Yeah, so it's a good karma night. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and a great man of fights, you know. Have you ever worked with Kevin Ross, Kevin Ross returning tonight? Uh, no, you know, I've been so, so out of the... Uh, kickboxing stand-up Muay Thai type of fights that uh, all the characters have changed right and uh, but but I know you know I've, I've seen them on TV and the style of fighting has really improved just like in the mixed martial arts you know these guys these athletes have gotten better and better and better and I'm looking forward to seeing some good fights you know it's funny with, with Kevin Ross a local boy and, and one of the, the the greatest Muay Thai fighters internationally but definitely the top 145 Muay Thai fighter here in North America he actually and I didn't even know about this I didn't even know Don House uh, coached or, or admits and stuff, but Don House used to coach Kevin in boxing. I saw, actually saw some highlight films of him and Don, and I was like, wow, Don's pretty sharp. Yeah, yeah, no, Don, you know, a lot of people don't know about Don House. He's a great cup man, but but he's also a super trainer, and, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> boxing, you work a lot of fights, or you, you spend a lot of time in the gyms, and you work with fighters, and then the fights get canceled, and, and you don't make no money, so I told House, you know what, see yourself the hassles, it's what I did, I just became 100% cup man, but he is a great trainer. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. Now, yeah. you know what? I just had a great idea. I mean, that, that Stitch is here with us right now, and we have a, in a couple of minutes we have to go to break. But we usually do our fight picks. How about we take the first four fights of tomorrow night's fights and get to everybody's pick? And I'm especially interested in what Stitch is going to say about the main event tomorrow night, Johnson and Dotson. What is your pick for that fight? Well, you know, I, don't I know you don't like to do well, that. And, and I don't pick winners, but, it, but I'll, I'll throw a little twist to it. I'll give you the possibilities of this fight creating cuts and bruising. I love it. And, right. and, and when you're looking at this one, you guys pick the winners, I'll pick the possibility of, of, of damage. And, and on this one, I, I see it as, as a great fight. Uh, really, it's going to be fast. It's like you're going to wind them up and go. I don't see no blood. Uh, I see some great fights. Yeah, a absolutely. Very, very exciting fight. Um, unfortunately, I don't think the flyweights have gotten the respect that they deserve so far in the UFC. I mean, we've some, we've heard a lot of boos during these fights when you see these guys constantly working. So it's kind of been a little unjustified. Um, you know, Demetrius Johnson's one of the fastest guys there is in the sport. Uh, Dotson, I don't know if he's as fast, but I, I think he'll be able to keep up. This is like, you know, Joe, we were talking about before the show started. It's definitely a pick'em fight. It really is. It's a close fight to pick. Uh, I think if Dotson lands, if he lands, he, he could potentially knock out Demetrius. But, I mean, I don't think I've ever really, we, we, we talked about it, we really haven't seen Demetrius put in a p situation like that. So I think I have to lead towards Demetrius Johnson retaining the title. Yeah, for me, uh, I'm with you. Dotson is quick and he's explosive. Uh, but, but there's a difference between quick and explosive and being fast. Right. You know, those are two completely different things where, 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 where Dotson is quick and explosive. Johnson's fast. I mean, he's really fast. He's fast everywhere it goes. He's fast with his punches. He's fast with his level change. He's fast with his takedown. And he's just as fast in the first minute as he is in the 25th minute. Um, and, yeah, you touched on the power of Dotson, but I've never seen Johnson get hurt. I mean, he has two losses. The one loss was to a knockout artist in the 145-pound division who used to fight a 155-pound division. Pickett. Brad Pickett. And this guy's a guy sure. with, with heavy, heavy hands. And he, he's fighting a, a person, tw you know, he's fighting Johnson 20 pounds lighter than him and he's not getting hurt by those punches the second loss was to the champ at 130 Dominic Cruz and he gave Dominic Cruz everything he had he held his own went five rounds with him did a great job um, I, and I just think that Johnson is so much more experienced you know he's got so much more under his belt you know going 25 minutes with Dominic with Dominic Cruz having two epic battles with Ian McCall who at the time was the, 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 the 125 pound king when there was no 125 pound division for the UFC this was the guy that everyone talked about as being the king Johnson goes to war with him twice gets a draw wins the second one then he goes into another five round war with another knockout artist Joseph Benavides who is a knockout artist and he you know kind of handily it, it was a it was a it was a good fight but it wasn't close I mean 
I mean, he's pretty dominant everywhere. And so I just think Johnson's got more experience. He's got more tools in the, in the toolbox. Um, I think his speed, consistent speed, and his wrestling is going to be a difference maker. And, and I think the champ will retain his belt. Yeah, you know, and everybody talks about his speed and all that. But that's effective speed because he's elusive. Right, and that's absolutely. the thing about it is he does not get hit. And that's one of the things about Mighty Mouse. But, you know, uh, Dotson, to me, is he's kind of the quiet horse right there. You know, so, you know, in this game, you know, boxing, I could predict who's going to win. I could tell you probably who's going to win. But in this mixed martial arts, it's a pick and fight, just like you said. Neither before. guy's ever been stopped. No. You know what my thing with Dotson is? Um, I think in another year, three, four more fights, this is a, a close, close fight. I, I just think for me, it's, it has to do with lack of depth in the division. I think it's just too much too soon for him. Nope. Yeah, but we'll see. You know, I can, shoot, well, I'm going to go out on limb here. I'm going to talk to the MMA gods. I'm going with John Dotson this fight. All right. We have a split. We have a split. Actually, right. I, I, don't th I don't think it's a split. I think you're going uh, uh, Johnson. Yeah. You're going Johnson. Yes. yes. We're Johnson and Johnson. Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> you guys are going Johnson. I'm going Dotson. So, what, what do you, let me ask you a question. What do you think about Rampage and Glover Teixeira? Uh, I think this is a bad fight for Rampage. I, mean, I really do. Listen, the last time we saw a Rampage fight, was uh, he just did not look like Rampage. He was completely unmotivated. Came in like, what, like 12 pounds overweight. So it, it wasn't really Rampage's time. At the, and it was really interesting on that Fox road to the, the octagon. His trainer talked about money and fame changing you. And, you know, the, the fact that Quentin's doing movies and getting all this notoriety that he really stopped the training. And he's moved back to, back to England for this fight to train. He looks motivated. He wants to go out on a high note because we know that it's very open that he's not staying around in the UFC, right. which I think is a very silly thing. But, I mean, he wants to go out there, explore his options. But Glover Teixeira is just a monster, a monster of a man. Uh, you know, I don't think he's lost in 17 fights. He's only been stopped once. The one time he was stopped was his very first fight. I mean, the dude is a beast. Right. Yeah, no, and, and absolutely, and I, I remember the first time he came into the UFC, he had such a quick knockout, I asked Joe Silver inside the octagon, where did this guy come from? He said, well, he had problems with visas, yep. you know, but, but keep in mind, in his last fight in Brazil, he took those hooks and got, and got, got buckled, yeah. and he got buckled, you know, so uh, Rampage, if anything he has, and the last thing that a fighter loses is that power. Pop, yep. Absolutely. Well, we'll revisit this in a little bit. We're sitting here with legendary cut man Stitch Duran at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino at Lion Fights here, getting ready for the Muay Thai fights. The MMA Fight Corner is sponsored by Fast Cash Title. The three great locations and grades at 9.95%. How can you go wrong? Competitors tell you they're giving you half off, but half off of what? Our man Mike will not be beat on the sold call. Fast Cash's new location at 702-822-4456. Tell them that Billy sent you and receive $50 off your first payment. And I have to tell you guys about a great experience, an amazing experience I had here in Las Vegas at LASIK of Nevada. I recently had my LASIK procedure done to correct my eyes to better than 2020. That's why I can see all the beautiful people and cool fighters, everybody right in front of me right now. I don't need glasses anymore. I'm telling you, it's like a miracle. Dr. Rothman and his staff were incredible through the whole process and extremely professional. I urge anyone who's out there who's thought about getting LASIK to speak to my doctor, Dr. Rothman. He offers a free consultation and 50% off premium LASIK. When you mention my name, Billy Mira, and 0% financing available, call 702-636-2010. That's again, 636-2010. You'll be glad you're delighted you did. I know I was. We come back. We're sitting here with Stitch Duran, and Daniel Cormier is supposed to join us as well. New UFC fighter, Daniel Cormier, Fox Sports Radio, 920. The MMA Fight Corner. International Rugby returns to Las Vegas this February 8th through the 10th as teams from 16 countries compete in the World Series of Rugby. Tickets include access to an international fan festival featuring an eclectic mix of food, drinks, music, and culture. Don't miss the biggest international party in North America. Buy tickets now. Yes, yes, I hear him. I hear him. I hear him. What do you want? That's what I'm talking about. What? Hotel. He said. She said to call Cormier. <laughs> I'm trying, but you keep talking to me. <laughs> He's trying, but we keep talking to him. You know that's the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. If you can stop Joey, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's my logo, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Joey, shut up! Remember that when I was like six? Oh, if you can stop six-year-old Joey, yeah. Oh man, you know a million miles an hour. Yo, man, it went straight to voicemail. 
Yo, anybody there? Hey, how's that for advertising? Oh, right. Hey, what's going Hello? on? Hey, 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 what's up? Tell Heidi that the phone See, uh, it's uh, going straight to voicemail, like it's turned off. Going straight to voicemail. Okay. Okay. Cormier's. Hey, Cormier's going to voicemail. Or we can just right, continue right, the right, breakdown. Right. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. We'll just pick up the breakdown. Yeah. And if DC comes on, great. If not, we can we can still that breakdown can go until Scott Kane. Okay, yeah. Are you guys doing things? Yeah, we just we, we, just, we started to start uh, the main did, event. We just did one actually. We didn't even pick the random. Yeah, no, yeah. So so, so let's. Where's Daniel? He's not coming. Hey, Armando. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, just try him a couple more times in like a couple of minutes or whatever. Yeah, I've been trying. Every, I've tried okay. three, four times. All right, no big. So, uh, yeah, no Cormier yet. Okay, uh, how long do we have? Two minutes after this break. All right. Mediation of chance. Call 967-6800 to set up a free consultation. At Cullen Brown, 967-6800, we're helping people keep their homes. Hey, Jack, you got a sec? Yeah, sure, come on in. Yeah, I was wondering if you... Jack, your hair's on fire. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I just need to finish this sales report, and then I'll probably, you know, I don't know, let me lie down for a bit. But I'm, I'm sure it'll go away. But the flames are getting bigger. Sh shouldn't I... Your hair, there's so much fire. No, 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 I'll be fine. What can I help you with? Oh, dear. Well, at least we know the sprinkler system works. You wouldn't ignore this. One minute, guys, one minute. If you or someone you know suddenly experiences numbness of the face or the leg, or sudden trouble speaking, seeing, or walking, don't wait to get help. Call 911 right away, because time lost is brain lost. To find out more, visit www.strokeassociation.org or call 1-888-4-STROKE. This message brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. The MMA Fight Corps. Coming back. Stop. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. We have ignition. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corps on Fox Sports Radio 920. You're here with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Joey Varner, and legendary cut man himself, an unofficial member. No, no, no. no. Let me rewrite that. Official member of the MMA Fight Corner, Stitch Duran. Not only that, I love Stitch so much that I'm actually wearing his tape <laughs> <laughs> on my head. Now, all you listeners can't see this naturally driving in your cars or sitting at home or wherever you are right now, but if you were able to see the live stream on MMAFightCorner.com, You'd see me all taped up right now because Joey Vaughn just punched me in the head and I think I have a good case. Well, I have, I have I a do. better idea. Well, we can actually call that the, the Chavez. <laughs> I, I, I have a better idea. Everyone should come on down here to the Hard Rock, check out the Muay Thai fights, and then you get a chance to actually do some damage to Billy's head here too so we can use more of this tape. Because we need to test to see how well the tape really works. Yeah. Well, if it, it works anything like Stitch Durant. I well, mean, Stitch we actually had the ultimate test. Well, you know, Jacob Hatton just asked me right out to tape up Jamie Varner. And, and, and if I could do that, if you could keep quiet, then you know the tape works, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were going to put it over Joey's mouth. <laughs> so it's not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If he can shut me up, man, it'll stop anything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think it would need a couple times to go around his head before we, we can do that. We need a couple rolls. <laughs> we need some staples. Do you have stitch staples? Stitch uh, staples. Uh, well, that's 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 next, oh, next oh, oh, my fingers, man. That's it. That's it. Huh? Yeah, that's uh -huh. all no, I need. No staples needed. No got, staples needed, brother. When you got the stitch skills, but um, so uh, let's go. Let's get back to breaking down the card. So Phil, you you were saying uh, rampage to Shira. Yeah, you know, dude. Uh, like so Stitch was saying, uh, well. My pick. See, here's the thing. I just checked out the weigh-in results. 
Very surprised. Rampage came in at a nice lean 204. All right, so so maybe he is motivated for this fight. We'll have to see, you know, in the last fight Teixeira had, Maldonado rocked him. You saw, I mean, he put a world-class beating on Maldonado, sure. but Maldonado was able to rock him. You know, Rampage Jackson's got still, he still has power in those hands. You know, he still has power in those hands. He, he's a tough dude to knock out. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Glover Teixeira, though. Okay, so uh, pretty much everything you said, yeah, I, I, I can go with 100%. It's hard to put your faith in Rampage when you've got a guy that's never liked training. He's never liked being in camp. He's never liked dying. Di uh, dying. He's never liked dieting. <laughs> <laughs> Who likes dying? Don't, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that some foreshadowing? No, he's never, liked, he's never liked dieting, you know, and he's been very vocal about leaving. This, 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 so he's got one foot in the cage, one foot out. It's hard to, to, to put your faith in a guy who, who's, who's doesn't seem that motivated to be there in the first place. Um, in Malvin, uh, or excuse me, in Tashira, you've got almost a, um, it's almost like when we look back at UFC on Fox 5, you have BJ Penn versus Ray McDonald and Shogun versus Gustafson. Those are changing of the guard fights. And when you look at this right here, this is very similar again. It seems to be another changing of the guard fight. Um, Tashira's a guy who's had a lot of hype. His, his first two fights, he came in the UFC with tons of hype. They've been talking about him for years. He had visa issues. His first two, two fights in the UFC were violent, were vicious, and, and, and were, were bold statements. But Phil, you touched on the second fight. He did get rocked. You know, this guy who seemed indestructible and it seemed like he's an unstoppable force, you know, he got put on, he got put on bamboo legs. You know, he was rocking around rubber legs a couple he got times. He and, and by Maldonado, who's a great boxer, very sharp boxer, but not known as a power puncher. Um, and so when you're fighting against someone like Rampage, who's got knockout power in both hands, but they also have knockout power um, with their style of counter fighting. Rampage likes to catch and shoot. He likes to let you throw one, two, three on the third fight. He'll, uh, he'll, he'll catch it with his hand and, and punch off it. He'll catch off whatever punch you threw and punch off it. And, and that's exactly how Tashir got rocked against Maldonado. So, you know, Rampage is in this fight 100%. Um, but you'd have to be a fool to bet against Tashira. Yeah, well, you know, and that was my analogy right there, exactly like you were saying. And if I was Rampage's coach, and I know he didn't want to train hard and probably, you know, at the tail end, I'd work on a whole bunch of hooks. You know, I would work on that check, 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 counter, and come right. out with a hook. Yeah. You know, because if he has anything that, that he knows Tashira is, is vulnerable to, it's that hook, and it happened twice with Maldonado. So that's the way I would bring him up. Absolutely. Now, the other thing, though, is, is Rampage has been very susceptible to leg kicks. Yeah, and we, we've seen Tashira be very effective at blending his strikes together. Se seamless integration of punches to kicks, punches to kicks to punches to takedowns. So I, I, I think I would see Tashira maybe possibly, if I'm his coach, telling him to open up a little less with your punching combos and use, you know, one to two punches to set up a kick, one to two punches to set up a takedown, but keep it simple. So my pick at the end of the day is, is, is after this long-winded dissertation, I'll get off my soapbox. <sighs> uh, I know, really. Um, I'm picking Tashira, but I'm just putting an asterisk in there. If I'm a betting man, I'm not betting the money. The odds aren't there. It's ridiculous. Um, and Rampage is in this fight. He's always in the fight. But, you know, it's Tashira. So I think you hit, hit, hit the nail on the head earlier kind of the changing of the guards yeah you know think about it rampage fought once last year twice the right. year before that you know hasn't fought a lot so you know it's a shame though because this probably is his last fight in the ufc right and you know and, and if he takes a, a volume of punches and and here's where i come in in my analogy yeah i see rampage getting cut i see him getting boozed up because he has gotten cut in the past so yep. that's my two cents yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i definitely think uh, first of all I, i'm going to share a, without a shadow of a doubt in this fight and i i'm going to make a prediction i think we see rampage jackson and bellator really yeah i'm, I, I'm I, leaning more towards japan I mm -hmm. lean more towards uh, him uh, going back to Japan. I know he's only coming out one FC. That's one, why, or, or yeah, so it, it Asia. definitely Asia. He I'm likes Asia. Asia. Here's my problem with the whole Ram based predicament and him being very vocal about leaving the UFC. It's a mistake. He, well, you, well you, A, you're not going to get paid like that anywhere else, okay? Bottom line, he's not going to get that kind of paycheck anywhere nope. else in the mixed martial arts world. But secondly, if you do want to leave and you do want to get paid more, you don't tell everyone that you're not happy with your current employer because then they're not going to offer you the money that you deserve. You're giving away your, the, the, the ability to negotiate and bargain. Are you, like, are you kidding your me? Hand. Are you kidding me? They pay me so much money. I get to sit around and do nothing all day. I have the greatest job on earth. 
You exactly. need to show me the bank if I'm going to leave. Exactly. Now, here's an interesting thing, though. Uh, we don't know for sure, but everyone's operating the, uh, under the assumption that the UFC, if, Mo, if, if, if Rampage does decide to try to go to Bellator, or Bellator does have um, uh, interest in him and would like to court him, the UFC most likely does have that in their contest or in their in their contract the matching clause, similar to what Bellator has, which Eddie so Alvarez just yeah. Lost so today. so you could see oh he lost he lost well New York well, denied him. Let's yes. get back to that. Yeah. I didn't know that, but I can see a similar situation arising with the roles reversed, where the UFC is the one matching the offer that Bellator is giving. Uh, well, we will we'll find out interested. after tonight or tomorrow night. That's right. for sure. I don't think that's going to happen. I just think he's been so vocal about not wanting to be in the UFC, and there's just some bad blood there, and I think he moves on. And like I said, I make the prediction, he's going to wind up in Bellator. Just, I don't know. What do you think? You say I you got a feeling from the so uh, you, MMA you gods. It, but see, that, that's why would Bellator want to do that? They're trying to build their brand. They're, they're just coming off. And if Rampage loses tomorrow night, and if he loses in a very violent it's fashion, they're goods. not going to want to take him back, take him there. They don't I want think it, Rampage uh, in Japan is a good idea for everybody. He's a legend over there. Point, they love point. him. I think that's what Rampage and, does. And he'll make ten times Bang. the money in Japan or in Asia that he would anywhere in the U.S. outside of UFC. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see. But also the next fight on this fight card tomorrow. And by the way, I know that we announced that uh, Daniel Cormier was joining us as well, but I don't know. I think Daniel's hanging out inside the arena. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Running around to see the fights or getting ready for tomorrow night. Who knows? Uh, Heidi Fang, no answer from Daniel yet? All right. Well, we'll figure something. Maybe he'll show up later in the show. So, uh, yeah, next fight. Cerrone. Next fight, though, on the Bar Nights card. I urge everybody not only to get down here tonight to watch these Muay Thai fights, but tomorrow night's box card with the UFC is going to be amazing. Another fight on this card. <laughs> that Cowboy one, Cerrone and Anthony Pettis. That one is Showtime, Showtime versus the Cowboy. Yeah, you know, yeah. if, if anybody's going to make any money for fight of the night, that's my prediction that that is going to be the fight for fight of the night. No Has doubt. No doubt. Be. It's such a hard fight to call. I mean, both guys are amazing on the ground and on the feet. They're both right. dynamic, exciting. Uh... The only difference is, is Cowboy, since he's come over to the UFC, has looked real. I mean, he's won six or seven fights. Remember, he fought five times last year or two years ago. Yeah, it was last year alone. Five times. So, I mean, he, he's fought a lot. Okay, so, and Pettis has been off the sh on the shelf for a little bit. Okay, and he came in as the WEC champion, loses his very first fight to Clay Guida. Okay, um, you know, he's looked good since then, but then the injury set him back. You know, I, it's a tough fight to call. It really is. Um, I, I think I'm going to go with Pettis. And I think with Pettis getting the win, he's probably going to get next in line for whoever wins against uh, Melendez and Henderson. Well, you know, and if he does beat Cerrone, and like I say, Cerrone to me is a super fighter. and yes. His leg kicks are just devastating. If he beats Cerrone, then that really kind of escalates him way up to the top. Absolutely. Know, no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Winner is yeah, a number. Should be a number one contender. Should be a hot, hot prospect. And here goes Joe. Yeah, well, this fight is tough for me because uh, <laughs> Cowboy's my boy, man, yeah. and I and I like him a lot. Um, I, I don't really know Showtime, but I, I like Cowboy. I want to see Cowboy win. I want to see him do good. You know, I'm always I like him personally, and then I'm a fan of just his attitude, and not in a negative way, but he's like, hey, man, I show up to fight. I'll fight anybody. You know, I don't have ill will towards them. I just love what I do. This is what I do. You know, total. He's, greatest nickname ever to describe somebody. Yeah, yeah, and he's, he's respectful and honorable, but he's down. He's always down. Like, okay, you want to fight right here? Let's fight right here. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I love it. that about him. Um, that being said, when I look at the styles of both fighters, uh, Cowboy's style, style <coughs> excuse me, Cowboy's <laughs> style of, uh, of striking, he's a little more loopy, he opens up a little more, he puts his chin up, his boxing isn't as sharp or crisp. He's kind of walk forward. He doesn't have the sharpest footwork, uh, or, or the sh it's 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 more of a, a kickboxing footwork, a tie boxing footwork. Whereas Pettis is is I think sharper. I think he's crisper. His elbows are in tight. He puts everything together nice, sharp, quick, tight. Um, he, he his his kickboxing has a lot of boxing uh, fundamentals or, or mentality. You know, he's flashy. He, he uses feints. He uses angles. He's quick. He's light on his toes. So when I match those two styles up. I, I think the, the, the striking style of Pettis is more effective over when it meets the striking style of Cowboy. Um, uh, so I think in a striking contest, if it turns into a kickbox fight, I think Pettis will edge him out. Now, Cowboy is the bigger, stronger uh, fighter, in my opinion, uh, both appearance-wise, and actually I think he's, uh, he's stronger when it comes to physically tying each other up. And we've seen a lot of, of offensive wrestling out of Cowboy. You know, we saw him taking down Horideki at will in the Horideki fight. 
Um, we've, we've seen him using his double leg takedown, and, and with great takedown defense, and with great um, posture and ground and pound and, and submission offense from top and from bottom. If Cowboy does win this fight, I think it will be because he uses his wrestling game, because he, he goes into this grappling. If he gets into a striking war, I think Pettis is sharper. The thing that bothers me about this is that to be sharp and to, to beat Pettis, he can't be emotional. He can't be angry. He can't be like he was in the Nate Diaz fight, where he just came up and he's trying to kill him. Because when he does that, he's easier to hit for a sharpshooter. He's easier to pick apart. He's less methodical, less scientific. And the way his mindset seems now, he seems angry. He seems hostile. He seems very much in a similar mental state of mind called out Pettis. That he was going into the Nate Diaz fight. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if he's where he needs to be mentally to perform the way he needs to perform in order to beat Anthony Pettis. And I'm praying for Cerrone to win. But if I got to tell someone who to bet the money and I had to be all all personal relationships aside and scientific breakdown, analytical, I, I got to pick Pettis. Yeah. Stitch, you said uh, yes. Uh, no, 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 but if he comes in with those type of, of weapons, I, I think he has a fighting chance. Kind of like in boxing, Guerrero versus Berto. Absolutely. Where Berto was the sharper, polisher guy, and Guerrero just made it a street fight. He and grabbed yeah, him, he hit him, he pushed him against the ropes. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. You know, so in this game, you can never pick. You know, it's tough to pick, uh, but, it, but it's going to be a good fight. Now, on, on that side, I expect the cut men to get some work on both sides. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be a busy yeah, night. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to go with Pettis in this fight as well. Showtime Pettis. I think it's yeah. going to be his fight. I think, I don't know. That's just the way I see When the MMA gods talk to me, yeah. that's that's who tells me. So yeah, that's, right. that's so my you're, pick. You hear, you hear voices, what you're telling us, though. Yeah. We knew that, though. Well, how, yeah. how can I add we to what Joey? That. How can you add to what Joey said? There's yeah. no doing it. They, these guys covered it all. Nice. There, thank you. Hey, listen, let me, uh, let me cut in real quick. I, I have a big conference call i got to go to, and uh, I'm going to drive so to the other side of town. But it was great having uh, you guys having me here, and uh, I hope you guys call me again, man. I, 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 always I, a pleasure. I you about to say it was great uh, having you guys on my show. But <laughs> I, yeah, you, it, it will be. This, this, it, this it will be. It, it, it might be, brother. You know, it already I, is. I fight for everything I do, man. Right. <laughs> but listen, it's a pleasure, man. Uh, really, thanks so for it. Always a pleasure, uh, Stitch. And, uh, Stitch Duran, right here. Go get his new <laughs> tape. Where can they get this? Where uh, can actually, uh, in uh, one more week, it's going to be available at stitchpremium.com. Uh, so you guys come on down and, you know, have a new hemostatic gauze pad called Quick Aid that uh, we've been using in the UFC for the last year, and it stops blood in a heartbeat. And, uh, right. you know, for it. a lot of these guys that can't get a prescription like me, uh, that's the thing that you guys got to get. You yeah. heard it from uh, the man himself right, right, right there. there. Absolutely. Uh, well, thanks right. for having me on, guys. Always right. a pleasure. God bless. We'll see you soon. All right. All right. Thank you, Joey. All right, man. All right. So what do you, what do you think about uh, the last or the first fight on the, the main card tomorrow on Fox? You got Eric Koch and uh, Ricardo Lamas. Very interesting fight at, at uh, Featherweight. Yeah, this is... Uh, it's interesting, you know, and because um, DC, whenever you're ready, you guys want to. Oh wow! Whoa, whoa, whoa. DC, I mean, I mean, wait a second! I think we got him out of the fight. or got him out of training. D Daniel Cormier is joining us. Joining us, Daniel, you there? Yeah, what's up, guys? DC, DC in the house. What's happening? What's up, boys? Everybody what's listening, on? we have newly signed UFC heavyweight Daniel Cormier on the line. Daniel, what's what's happening, brother? Tell us what's going on. I just left the ball with my kid. Here, my daughter cries in the back when he got some tennis shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're playing the domestic role today? Oh yeah. Oh I've yeah. Been, I've been for a while. Man. Mama <laughs> left. My my, uh, my girlfriend left this week to go and take a little break. You know, she always has the kids when I'm training, so I had the kids with myself for a couple of days. And I tell you one thing, it is not easy. Definitely not. Now. Uh, I saw on Twitter a few, uh, like a, a week or so ago, Daniel, um, that y you were a little surprised with some of the reaction of the fans uh, after your fight, and you were wondering what you did wrong. Uh, I'm wondering yeah. the same. Did anyone answer you? Has anyone gotten a, some sort of response as to why there was so much negative talk? Yeah, well, you know, one guy actually, one guy actually forwarded me a link to a reporter who said I had a very uninspired performance. And I don't know exactly what I didn't do, you know. So that's kind of where that question came from, because I mean, I want every every 
every area of the fight, I think the guy landed one punch mm -hmm. over the course of a 10-minute fight. I mean, I, I don't know what more you could do in a fight to uh, to win. I mean, hey, I wasn't in there with some guy that had never fought before. This guy's a 13-year veteran, uh, had over 30 fights, and, you know, they, you know uh, he fought, he fought, you know, little nog, and, and, and 10 seconds from the fight being over, no Garrett caught him in a, a triangle choke. So yep. it's... Uh, the guy's not the guy. You know, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't as bad as people kind of thought he was. I guess. You know what? I, I got to tell you this honestly, Daniel. Haters, haters gonna hate, man. I, I, I thought, and maybe it was someone who just wasn't, wasn't watching you. You know, it's like you, you tell someone, "Oh, this is the greatest movie in the world," and then they go see the movie, and because they, it got built up so much, they were let down. That might have been the case. I, I don't know, but I, I thought you did great. I was impressed with the performance. I thought you looked solid. I thought, uh, you know, you, you, you looked, up, you improved upon everything you did in your last fight, and uh, I gave you an A, A, A for, A for performance. I think, you know, I mean, granted, there were a lot of factors, you know, played into that fight. You know, uh, uh, first off was the weather in Oklahoma City was just ridiculous. Everybody got sick. I mean, I was feeling I was feeling kind of down, and that, that, that put some doubt on me. You know, when I was in the back, uh, for the first time in my career, you know, my coach and manager said he could sense that I was nervous. I was nervous because, like, you know, uh, the nerves of actually having to perform well, the nerves of not knowing if I was going to get tired. Uh, being that I was sick, uh, it was a lot of things, you know, because, you know, I take a lot of pride in, in being in, in, in good shape for the fight and having good cardio. You know, I didn't want to go out there and gas, whether it be due to sickness or anything, and, and not fight to the level that I'm used to fighting. So it was a, I kind of had some nerves for the first time in my career, and I think most of it came from uh, just the fact that I, I was kind of feeling a little under the weather. Well, yeah, I remember, you know, hearing reports that everybody had gotten sick that week, and it was just something really awful hit town, and it, it just kind of just quarantined everybody. Yeah, it was bad, man. I mean, I was talking to uh, Josh uh, Barnett, and he was telling me how he just felt terrible, and, you know, all week I, I felt bad. I was just loading up on those, uh, the vitamin C emergency, and uh, not wanting to take too much medication, because that stuff makes you drowsy. Uh, uh, eventually, on Thursday, I had to take some Mucinex, just so that I can try and sleep through the night, you know, try to clear up my sinuses because, I mean, it was 24 degrees, and I tell you, that wind was blowing, man. And when you leave California and it's 60 degrees outside, you go down to 23 degrees, uh, it's a huge difference. So, shell shock, yeah. A lot of guys got sick, man, and, and uh, you know, I wasn't the only one, so, you know, I'm not making any excuses. I, I, I fought as well as I could on that night. You know, I also wanted to make sure I didn't hurt myself, you know, I, I'd been breaking my hand over and over again. And I wanted to make sure I didn't hurt myself, and you know, I, I really wanted to be careful, man. I, I, I he was a very dangerous opponent. He was a very dangerous opponent. No, he definitely was, and, and we had talked about that before the fight that uh, a lot of people were selling him short, and you mentioned how disrespectful it was with the odds and everything like that. So you know, people they, they just some, uh, I guess unless you've been in there, you don't know. Um, now you've gotten what you want. You're in the UFC. You got that fight with Frank Mir. Hey, everything signed, ready to go. You'll be fighting in uh, San Jose. Yeah, yeah, we're good to go, man. Excellent to hear. Now I don't, I don't want to put that, pa you know, look past that or anything. Um, but it was very interesting today. The UFC did a Q&A with uh, John Jones, and you know, it's been, you know, your your friendship has been noted, and people have talked about it. Uh, one of the things that he said was that he said he was definitely looking to go to heavyweight in the future, but what he wants next is for you to come down to 205, and he now wants to fight you. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, I think that's great. You know, I, I think uh, over the course of this whole thing, he's never flat out said, I want to fight Daniel. You know, uh, even whenever uh, people would ask him, you know, uh, you know, what about D.C.? You know, he say say things like, I need to stop talking and, and just get down to the weight. But then it would, the follow-up question would be, well, is that a fight you're interested in? And he would never just straight out say, yeah, I want to fight Daniel. And today was probably the first time he said that. So I think that's a very, very good thing. Yeah. Daniel, do you dislike John Jones? No, not at all. Do you I don't dislike him. I just think that, I just think that, uh, you know, I mean, there, obviously there are things about, all kinds of people that, that we can, you know, find find that uh, don't necessarily rub us the right way, but um, do I have a hatred for John? No, I, I think I think he's great. I think he's a 
an unbelievable athlete. I mean, he's a great champion, a guy that's fought everybody, and and uh, I think it'll be a good fight. But uh, is he my favorite person? Uh, Probably not. <laughs> Speaking of your favorite people, I noticed that you've been talking to Josh Barnett quite a, quite a bit since your fight with him uh, a while ago. Uh, what kind of a relationship have you built with Josh since then? Well, Josh is a cool guy. You know, Josh was cool all the way up to the fight and uh, until about the week before, then he kind of started acting a little different, you know, and, and, and you know, that just made it easier to fight him. But uh, he's a pretty cool guy, man. Josh has always been very respectful of my accomplishments in wrestling in the past and things that I've done so far. So, you know, I, I see him. It's, uh, it's not like we sit and talk on the telephone or anything or text message each other, but, uh, you know, we uh, we see each other. We have a very, very, you know, good relationship, I think. You know, I uh, he's a nice guy. I, I really like Josh. I think he's cool. What do you think the chances are that he winds up in the UFC? I think he's going to, I I think it's going to happen. And I think he's going to give a lot of guys problems. You know, he's a, I was in there with him. You know, this dude's, uh, he's crafty. He's tough. And uh, mean Josh Barnett enjoys hurting people, and uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's a very good trait to have if you're a fighter. That was just the perfect analogy of Josh Barnett. Josh Barnett <laughs> likes to hurt people. He, he certainly really does. <laughs> hey, we we were breaking down uh, tomorrow's card a little earlier in the hey, show. Hey, hey, did you guys see my tweet though? Which I said, John, hey, I got a fight, dude. Leave me alone. Stop picking on me. <laughs> Leave me alone. I got a fight. I'm scheduled, man. Come on, dude. See, don't you hate that? Your fight? Don't you hate that when fighters just all of a sudden start calling you out and they're ready to accept any challenge you throw down, but you've already got something booked? Well, my thing is just, gosh, guys, leave me alone. <laughs> what are you doing? Get off my when tail. I was, when I was picking on him, this was right after I fought, and I didn't have anything on books. Now I'm scheduled in... I mean, last, uh, to my knowledge, he's scheduled, but now he's telling me, yeah, I don't want to fight Daniel. Hey, dude, we both, we're both pretty busy. Yeah. We're fighting a week apart, you know, we've got some issues. I mean, Frank Mir, that dude may beat me up, man, and then all this stuff could be for nothing, you know, so, so uh, I got to focus. I don't know if he feels he has to focus fighting Chael, but I know I got to focus. Otherwise, I'm going to get beat and I'm screwed. Yeah. yeah. What, what right. do you think about his fight with Chael? I think he's gonna win. I don't think many guys can beat that dude. That's the thing, you know. I, I've said time and time again, regardless of what you feel about Don Jones as a fan, as a person, he's unbelievable. He's a great fighter, you know. It, it, and not many guys can beat him. And I just truly believe that, unbiased. Truth of the matter is, Chael's biggest, biggest advantage in most of his fights is his wrestling. People say John's length, his height, and all this. And that's a big advantage. But John's biggest advantage is his wrestling. Anytime he's uncomfortable, he takes guys down. Chael's a better wrestler, uh, um, accomplishments-wise. But I don't think the gap is big enough for him, to, for him to impose that on John. John's a good wrestler. You saw John out wrestle Ryan Bader. Ryan Bader was a two- or three-time All-American, you know, so... John Jones would have wrestled in college. He probably would have been an NCAA champion. He, the guy's a really good wrestler. And that's his, I just don't think the gap is big enough for Chael to impose himself on him in that aspect. Wow. What is, what's, the, what, what's the solution to the puzzle? All right, we got to go to commercial here in two minutes, but just real quick if you can. What's the solution? How, how do you beat John Jones? Uh, first off, I think you have to be on two Olympic teams. <laughs> be a six-time U.S. national champion, He's say him. NCAA, NCAA finalist, and three-time All-American, and an undefeated MMA fighter. Who trains at AKA? Like the perfect, uh, solution. Who who trains trains AKA? Uh, who's, whose initials are DC? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, they, they, you know, his initials seem to fall right behind each other in the alphabet. No. Uh, right, right, exactly. Hey, Daniel, real quick, uh, any predictions for tomorrow night's fight card coming up on Fox? Yeah, it's gonna be some great fights, man. Uh, Demetrius Johnson, I think he's uh, solidified himself as the best in that division. Uh, I think Rampage is probably going to lose. Seems too distracted. Uh, and uh, hopefully Anthony Pettis. I like Donald Cerrone, but, um, you know, I, I, them saying that that's the number one contender's fight. Cerrone just got beat up pretty bad by Nate Diaz. I want to see somebody new in there. Absolutely. Nice. Well, Daniel, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for coming on the MMA Fight Corner, and we're going to have you back in here uh, hopefully soon, maybe before or after the Mir fight. Uh, brother, thanks so much for joining us again. We want to thank Daniel Cormier. We want to thank all of our guests, Stitch Duran. We want to thank you, the fight fan. 
I, I'm telling you, if you can make it down here to the Hard Rock, Lion fights right now, Muay Thai fights, come check it out. And for more of the MMA exclusive interviews, MMA Fight Corner interviews, go check out MMAFightCorner.com. Uh, until later, I don't know, next week. Enjoy we'll the fights. Enjoy the fights. Enjoy the fights, guys. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio, 920. Get down to the Hard Rock. Entering my home are the sounds that come in over this radio. KBAD Las Vegas. My city. My city. It's my station. My station. Fox Sports, Fox Sports Radio 920. Uh, I, I, I think the layoff is really going to be too much to go. Gearing up for Super Bowl 47. I'm Chad. He's going to get the Niners will meet in the Super Bowl. The teams will arrive in the world. He is. He, co- he coined a phrase, dude. It's all coined. He's going to get Mendez again. Although, listen. Joey. Pope does have the ability to knock him out. And the other was to uh, Alcantara. 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 Super Contra. Are we doing another half an hour? No way. Oh, I thought For what? I mean, I don't know. Well, hey, what about the Brothers? I thought they were coming down. I mean, we can't, if we get somebody, like, you know what I mean?
Yo, your tone. It's all wrong. You're talking to my guy wrong there. Do it again. I'm stabbing you out with a soldering iron. That's all right. It's okay. I don't care. What do you know? There's 20 minutes left. I guess. I don't know. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner, Fox Sports Radio 920, and live on Ustream right now. And we are live at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here for Lion Fights Muay Thai happening 
uh, at the Hard Rock. I can tell you, man, I'm really psyched about this fight card. So many people here tonight, not only from the Just Southern Gil Muay Thai. Gilbert Melendez standing over there. Check Congo on his way. De La Hoya is supposed to be Where's here Gilbert? as well. Gilbert, Gilbert to sit on. So you, 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 uh, you want to actually get the, you want to get down here to the Hard Rock Hotel here in Las Vegas. I mean, all the MMA fighters are here, the top Muay Thai fighters in the world. Live on Access TV in, what is it, 45 minutes we go live on Access TV? Scott Kent, CEO. Joining us right now, CEO of Lion Fight Bye. Promotions, the man who made this happen, who's bringing Muay Thai back to America, putting it on television, every single home across the country. Scott Kent, thanks for joining us, brother. Guys, you know what? We need, we need, we he's need on, he's on, he's good, it's good. Okay. Now, how do you feel? This is a historic event because televised in 45 minutes. I tell you what, it's it's historic in a lot of ways. It's uh, the fact that we've got a lot of these American fighters, and we've signed them to a multi-fight contract, the fact that we're on national TV for the first time ever, and the fact that we've got probably the best pound for pound Muay Thai fighter in the world as our main event is, is, is just amazing. Yeah, we had Yad down here a little while ago, uh, you know, just very humbling being standing in front of him. Greatest guy, you know, I've spent the last week with him and he is the most unassuming, respectful guy I've ever met. And not to look past Chaplin, but Yad was, was, was here on the show and he told us that, he, you know, A, he loves being here in America, fighting in Las Vegas. He, he loves the way he's been treating the show. But he said he would love to come back and have a rematch possibly with Andy Sauer. Yeah, we talked about that. You know, we wanted to try and come up with a wish list of fighters that he'd like to see. Um, John Wayne Parr, Andy Sauer, uh, Krushenko, there, there, there were a few guys, you know, it's like the who's who of, of Muay Thai. So, obviously we would love to put those fights together. Well, it was, we had uh, Kevin Ross on here earlier who's, you know, fighting, making his return tonight. We're all very excited about that. But uh, we were talking about how, you know, a few years ago when Lion Fight was first starting up and, and his expectations of finally being able to have a promotion that would take Muay Thai to the next level here in America. And, you know, that was four, three years ago was this piece that I read on him. And tonight it, he, he says it just feels so great to have come full stream eight fight cards later. And now, look at this, live on Access TV, bringing it to North America. Yeah, Kevin has been, you know, the poster boy. And, and we talked about this before, guys. He's, he's fought everybody. He's called out everybody, uh, the top Thai fighters in the world. And, and to be able to sign him, and to showcase his skills, you know, he's coming off some significant surgery a year ago, but they say he's better than he's ever been, and, and I can't wait to see him fight tonight. Yeah, and he's one of, like, the only, he's an American Muay Thai fighter who's actually been able to go over to Thailand and not only compete with the best of the best in Muay Thai, but to actually win against Thai fighters. It's not an easy accomplishment. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, if you can win in Thailand, uh, you know, that... That's been pretty much our task is to, to, to bring in these American fighters and bring them up to the level of the international fighters. And we're doing that by, by developing our talent and bringing in guys from, you know, the best guys in the world, uh, Yad and Gregory. And, you know, we're bringing fighters from England, from Brazil, from Paris, from Thailand, from everywhere. It's amazing. There's so much excitement in the room right now for these, this fight card tonight. Not, I mean, we, we keep, I, I can't mention this enough, but just how many, a who's who of people showing up here tonight. Uh, who's some of the people that you've run into so far? Um, From all different communities. Yeah, I just by the way. Boxing, hold on a second. Yeah. Boxing, MMA, and Muay Thai. There's a who's who of people. Who are some of the people already, Scott? Uh, Oscar De La Hoya is here. Uh, Gilbert Melendez. Uh, che Conga. Uriah Faber. Uh, you know, uh, just a lot of folks. Joey Vonner. Joey, Joey Jardine. Vonner. Phil Devine. <laughs> yeah. Keith Jardine. I saw him earlier. I saw you know some, some Hollywood folks that are here. And that's what we wanted to do. It's entertainment. But we wanted to get a much broader audience for our amazing sport, and this is how we have to do it. Yeah. Now, now for, for, fans, for fight fans listening that aren't necessarily diehard Muay Thai fans, but they love a good fight, um, what can they expect tonight down here at the Hard Rock? What you'll see is the, the most exciting stand-up fight, stand fighting style there is. Uh, each fighter is, is allowed to use uh, punches, knees, kicks, and uh, elbows. So that's what's different from K1 and Glory, uh, is the use of the elbows, and you'll see Johnson Fly and some of these very seasoned fighters. Their their use of the elbows is is devastating. Sick. Absolutely. It's scary. Like Absolutely. you know, you, when you see people like a John Jones in MMA or an Anderson Silva, and the way that they use, 
You know, and John Jones has no Muay Thai background whatsoever, but the way that they use their elbows to their advantage. And with Muay Thai, when you have guys that have been training this for so long, it is so effective. And you don't realize how nasty it is until you're up there and you see it up close. Absolutely. You know, and we talked about it the other day, guys. You know, even mixed martial arts and the UFC, the evolution and how it's went from, you know, a ground game to a stand-up game. And a lot of the fighters now, a lot of the cuts that you see now are from elbows and clinches, spinning back elbows, spinning back fists, all traditional Muay Thai moves. It was funny. We had Mark Beecher on earlier, and he was saying how uh, they get away with that in MMA by saying it's the forearm, but there's no hiding it in Muay Thai. Oh, it's the elbows. <laughs> yeah, it's the elbow, absolutely. Now, we got a stacked card head to toe. Some of, some of the, the, the best fighters in the history of, of, of the sport, um, you know, Yatsin Klai in the main event. Kevin Ross uh, uh, earlier in the night. Malapet, also a, a former world champion who's just an absolute beast. I mean, and also, though, in the co-main event, you guys have quite a rising young star, and she, she's, she's cute, she's funny, she's intelligent, she's got an exciting uh, fighting style in uh, Tiffany Van Soost. Yeah, she's an amazing talent. We uh, signed her after her last fight with Jerry Seitz, uh, where she impressed everybody with her, her use of combinations. Um, I'd never seen her. I think I've seen two or three of her fights prior to that, but she impressed everybody, I think including Jerry Seitz in that last fight. Now, when you, when you had her on uh, and, and that Jerry, Jerry fight's taking place, going into that, you know, you, you didn't know who she was. And then halfway through, there had to be a moment where like, well, hold on, hold on. Who is this? I mean, because I remember we had Jerry on the show. She was kind of like the name fighter when we were building. But then when you watch, there's this moment of, oh, man, we're seeing the, the birth, the emergence of, of something special. Yeah, you can almost see the passing of the torch. I mean, Jerry's been around for many years, very well respected, fought all over the world. And for, for uh, Tiffany to come in and dominate the way she did uh, surprised ev everybody. Absolutely. Wow. I'm excited, man. I'm so excited for tonight's fights. I really am. And I think we have some other people that look in a walk onto the set. What's going on here? No, wait, that, and not only about the, the, the fights tonight, uh -oh, but uh -oh. who do you got here? <laughs> you have two of the best announcers doing oh, the, game. The, the, the card tonight. Michael Chavello, who loves Muay Thai like there's no tomorrow, knows the history like it, and Pat, who is just an absolute just icon, you know, and the two of them together on Access TV, it, it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, we were so blessed to have these guys. I, I heard... Uh, Pat was so excited to do it. He even took a pay cut just to come out because look at that. He, he he came to a couple of our shows before and he was absolutely just ecstatic about uh, doing another Muay Thai show. So we're thrilled to have it. That's that's passion. That's love for the sport. That's love for you do what, for yeah. what you do. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm excited. Uh, and you know what? We're with the, I keep on going back to Kevin Ross. He's a good friend of mine. But he he had the knee injury. He had the year off. And you always wonder what someone's going to look like when they come back for that. But Kevin said, you know. This was actually an opportunity for him to go back to the drawing board and fine-tune a lot of strengths in his game that he kind of let neglect. You know, he, he got used to doing things a certain way, and so he let some, some pieces of the pie, some elements of his fighting game, kind of fall by the wayside, and this actually gave him the opportunity to, to really sharpen those. So I'm excited to watch uh, the, the re-emergence, almost the rebirth uh, of Kevin Ross. Yeah, I mean, everybody's excited. I mean, I've followed Kevin for many, many, many years. And like I said, I, I, I've seen him in just some wars with some of these Thai fighters. And he's always come out swinging. And, it, you know, if he goes down, he goes down swinging. And uh, we're, we're thrilled to have him because I think he really represents everything about what we're trying to represent in American Muay Thai. Just these guys that train very hard. They're, they're very respectful of the culture and the, the art itself. And they just come every time to fight. And, and is that what you're looking for when you go out and you scout new talent, when you're bringing new fighters over to represent the, and fight in Lion, Lion Fight, but they're more than fighting, they're representing the company and the brand. And is, is, is that kind of what you're looking for, guys who have honor, integrity, but they lay it all on the line, they yeah. leave it all in the ring? Yeah. And I talk to Christine Toledo, our, our, our matchmaker, about this all the time. You know, people want to see fights. They want to see people fight. And you, you can still be very technical and still very aggressive. And I think that's what... The way we try and design our cards is to bring in fighters that we know. And I was talking to Keith Kaiser, and he said, that's what's interesting about your fights. You never know if it's a blue corner or a red corner that's going to win because they're so evenly matched. And we try and make them the most competitive cards that we can. 
Well, you know what, oh, Scott, we have to congratulate you on tonight's event of being a complete success, not only here at the Hard Rock, but of course, naturally to the national listeners on Access Television. We're going to see great things out Thank of the organization. You. Thanks so much for having us down here to cover the event. And like I said, we're going to see great things from uh, Lion Fights the next, in the next year. Thanks for your help, guys. Thank you, Thank Scott. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. And now, and now, now we actually have, yeah. we have a little special treat for everybody here. Yeah, check this out. <laughs> All right, now, getting Joe, ready. Joe, wait, wait. You guys, are, you, you fight fans out there are going to get a special treat right now. I, I Not only one, but two. I want to know how hard it was for you, Joey, just now to concentrate with. Well, the I got these two over these there. Two, these two boys oh, are funny, doing what they're no, doing. I got, I got to focus. To I'm used to dealing with uh, them. I got to focus. <laughs> oh. oh, look at this. Oh, it's a, it's a reunited <laughs> right here. They're reunited, and it feels so good. Put a, let me put headphones on this gentleman right here. These two men. We get in this, the camera's all set up. <laughs> Look at this, the Jinquani brothers. Look at that. What up? What's up, gentlemen? Welcome to the fight corner. How's it going? How's it going? How are you guys doing? Doing good. You're just inside watching the fights. How are they going? Oh, the fights are great. Yeah, really good. good so far. Amateur card is looking sick. Yeah, uh, this whole sick. fight card, I mean, it's just stacked. We're, we've yeah. been sitting out here. We're a little, we're a little ticked off right now because we're still out here. She's stuck out here. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, gee, come on, let's get the hell inside. They're not gonna put like a little hey, monitor out I'm there ticked for you off that y'all have a stuck out here. See, yeah. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not ticked off. Misery <laughs> needs company. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that if we I'm don't screw. You're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so going down with us. You get so a good view out here. Join a screw party now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm I screw you, 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 you screw me. Oh, is that how it is? Let alone. I just like, no. We might have to switch this over to the adult channel. Yeah. 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 So what's going on with you guys? Uh, nothing. I just finally got cleared from the doctor, so I'm good to go. Finally? Yeah, finally, man. Six months. Damn, I still got a big lump there. Yeah, man. But, I, I'm like, but I'm like Wolverine. That's, that's I hear a knuckle, huh? Extra fist. No, no, no that's, that's an extra knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> that's the spare one. So, that's so, 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 <laughs> so, if you piss me off, don't get the back hand. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> You'll get six <laughs> knuckles across the face. Hand is strong. <laughs> hand is strong. <laughs> Call me Captain Dolomite. <laughs> so you just got cleared. So how, how long till, uh, till we hopefully get to see you in there again? If somebody drops out, like in the February show, I hope to get on that one. Uh, but I hope to get on the March card as well. But uh, now Canada, no, uh, Canada, they don't, they don't like me. So yeah. They don't like. They well, don't, South Park said it best. Screw <laughs> Canada. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't. They don't, they don't love <laughs> brothers with good tans. <laughs> <laughs> He's dying over there. <laughs> Canada, Canada's Black like hundred people don't years tan. Behind, uh, <laughs> Black people don't tan. We just bake. <laughs> he has all <laughs> what, 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 what about Chitty Chitty Bang bro. Bang over there? What about you? What's going on with you? I want to know when you're going to be. I know you got a thing with RFA and you're on a little highlight, but I want to know when you're going to join the company your uh, your little big brother works for. Because <laughs> you're smaller. Yeah, you got, it's uh, it's about two inches. Yeah, man. You're still little. I'm yeah. not, hey, I fought at 155. Three. Seven, three. three. Yeah. Four, yeah. actually, but we're not no. counting. It's, Who's it's, counting? <laughs> um, uh, it's two. Nothing official yet, but I think March. Yeah? Yeah, maybe back in Denver. Dude, you were back real. Denver, yeah. Redeemed myself. All right, all right. Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> yeah, well, that was rough. Was, was, I'm not going to lie. The whole thing, I mean, the whole, the, so even, so even so leading so up so to the fight, it was a little rough. But you, you were very impressive in your last fight here in town Thank with RFA. It was, I mean, you put on a show, and, and it got to be seen on national TV, which is another good thing. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if I'm, I'm sure you went back and you watched the, you know, you watched the highlights, but Chavello was, Chavello was all over no, your tip. No, this guy, <laughs> watching his fight at least about four or five times. He's like, he's like. Hey, hey Anthony, Anthony, did you see this fight? Come on, Anthony, look at that. Hey, have you seen I was there. Uh, you I see was the there. Time we got the <laughs> did you ever watch uh, the Aziz Ansari comedy special? Where he's talking about, he goes to his house, he, Kanye West invites him over yeah. to his house. Yeah, he comes in and he goes into his old beats and he's like, yo, these are old beats. Like, yeah, they're dope. <laughs> that's, that's like, that's like Chitty at home. He invites him over to his house and he's watching his old fight. You watching watch his old fight? Yeah, it's dope. <laughs> it's kind of you like see this guy? <laughs> I don't, I don't. I watch his fights more than I watch my own. Now, let me ask you, you guys both came up through Muay Thai. You guys yeah. originally with yeah. Saxon Jinjera, one, yeah. one of the legends in, in Muay Thai. Coming back to a show like this, does this kind of 
you know. He's actually here. I saw him. I yeah, saw him yeah. walk by. But does this kind of get you, you know, hungry to be back, maybe fighting back in Muay Thai? There's, oh, there's, man. Yeah, there's never a time where I don't want to do Muay Thai. I, yeah. I love Muay Thai to the death of me. I, but it just, it doesn't, it doesn't get the exposure. It doesn't get the payment like MMA does. And, you except, think that's for, except for how it is going now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like now, now it's different. Now, so now, now the live up. fights is like getting getting the exposure. Now the the, the TV deal that they have, it, it's it, Access it looks, television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's gonna and be. With, and with me getting to an old age, and they want to start doing this yeah. now, which <laughs> is kind of unfair. <laughs> I was beating my. my they, know, they were just being everything. smart. Yeah. They were like, yeah. all right, let's keep yeah. this yeah. out as long as we can. They were like, let's keep, let's keep this, old, this old guy <laughs> out of the whole scene. But at the same time, though, I mean, it's, 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 it's mainly like. Um, it's a new challenge for me. Like MMA, it's, it's different. Like Muay Thai, I've done this since I was a kid. So mm -hmm. so MMA is like a new challenge. So I want, I want to see if I can do good in this, too. Yeah. That's, that's, that's why I do it, too. That's pretty much the same with me. Muay Thai, you can get far, you can get belts, but you're not going to get as far as you get with MMA. I mean, there's so many challenges that, that, are, that do come your way. Like, you're going to go up against a wrestler. If you can defeat a wrestler being a striker, then yeah. that's a challenge that's, that's pretty much achieved. If you're so fighting, what are you going to do if a guy takes you down? Yeah, I mean it's great because MMA allows so us like to like learn new things. Yeah. Don't let him rape you. <laughs> <laughs> Get your sweat off of me. Don't let him rape you. <laughs> Get your sweat off of me. Well, we had, I hope that's your cup. <laughs> we, had, uh, we had uh, Eric Coke on the other day, and obviously, you know he's fighting yeah, yeah, tomorrow yeah. against Lamas, and and he coined up the table. He was like, uh, yeah, yeah, he's not gonna be able to Mendez me. You know, and it was just like, it was like, oh yeah, but that's pretty much what happens yeah, when you yeah. go in there with Mendez. Yeah. So if it, it it's we were talking about that earlier, like a guy like Ben Askren. We watched Ben Askren yeah. last night. Oh, yeah, he was great. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you fell asleep and you just mentioned his yeah, name, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's mainly because we're in the same weight class, yeah. but it's like, but I, don't, the, I, don't, the, I don't... That type he's, of... He's great, but, but he's not... Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. No, not, not exciting in, in, any, in what, any way, but... I'll tell you what, though. He seems like he 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 turned the page. He 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 found his last his last yeah, he, found he, hole, did, yeah. he found the hole for the elbows. He found how yeah. to officially uh, effectively use his ground. He found how to make his 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 style, style exciting. exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and if he, he can build, build off that. Yeah, build off that and grow off that. He can make what's perceived as a boring style into something yeah, exciting. And I think it's yeah. because he left his old his old gym and went to Rufus. I yeah. think it's because I, I think I think it had a lot to do with. Um, People just probably just constantly like talking, talking noise about him. Like, right. oh, your fight's boring. You oh, he admits fight. it himself. Like, he'll there's a fight on if there's a fight on TV that's boring. You'll see him tweet, "Wow, this fight's worse than one of mine." <laughs> you know, he's he's kind of takes it in stride now. He realizes it. I mean, Ford said over there. We had a conversation about it last night about how boring it was. Yeah. Like, I woke him up in the middle of it. It's a commercial. Wake up. He just spit on his nuts. Ah, oh, you missed it. Which, which <laughs> for anybody here in Vegas cool. right now, or if you're at home watching on TV, you're not going to see any of that tonight. <laughs> you're not going to yeah. see yeah. any of that this tonight down here stand up, stand up at the Hard Rock. Yeah. yeah. It's the most exciting style of fight. Absolutely. It's it is. more exciting than this. Kicks, punch, elbows. Yeah, okay. absolutely, right. absolutely. I think there's going to be a lot more fans here tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's by yeah, cause, yeah, especially yeah, with being on Axis now. Yeah, yeah. A stacked event. Yeah, everybody should watch it. That's but I, think it's, I think it's also because it's a good car, too. It's not just because it's more tired. It's also it's stacked. stacked car. Car. You, know, yeah. you know what's crazy? Is that I didn't even know about the car until he told me about how good this car is. And then once I saw the whole roster, and I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah, Damn, how did I not hear about this earlier? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, snap. Who are you guys most What fights are you most excited for? Well, we have a... Josh, we have, yeah, like yeah, we have, we have Josh, cars, Josh yeah. Shepard fighting, and uh, I mean the return of Kevin Ross is pretty big too. So yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited for Kevin. Yonsen Clyde, Clyde you see Yonsen Clyde in live, yeah, yeah, fighting yeah, yeah. in person. That's just seeing him in person, walking, walking in the hotel, like, which, is, which, is, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. He sat in that chair. You were <laughs> in right there. Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> I have not watched you my bottom. Wait, Take it home with you. Take it home. I'm not leaving it alone. Wait, can I cut a little hole out of it? I know where you were going with the TMI. TMI. Too much information. Is this censored? No, we are allowed. You guys are always uncensored. So if I cuss, we're black. What do you expect? We grew up. No, no, no. First of all, we're black and we're from Nigeria. So you know. Like, you know. 
My friend, I don't my friend, I don't know if I can say this. I don't know if I can say this. I don't know if I can say this. I got some people super niggas. I got the cast to come into America. We keep the mocho goo. Sammy. Sammy. Yes. 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 Do you speak any Nigerian? I can understand it. You can't speak anything? Not even say like, what's your name? How you doing? I can say, hi. Okay, ready? Ready? I speak a little. I speak a little. I speak a little. I'll say some Yeah, you ready? Oh, oh, he's a oh, look at that look! God's you must be crazy me. talk, you know? Wait, wait, wait. Let me go. Let me go for when you're listen, 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 Come back next week and we're having a Salem Burger in the stock. Yo, I listen, you're talking about white is out of all of That's the day she for you. That's the day she for you. Okay, so. so Damn, so he doesn't need to pay out So, if you say K do, K do, K do, K do, I would say Odima. This is like, how are you doing? Yeah. Oh, Odima. Okay, yeah. that sounds like a that's song. Yeah. So basically, yeah, Joey. Joey. You bring up the language. Do. Joey wants to think she can talk it. Odima. Right. Right. No, he's, he's trying to hey, sing okay. it. Odima. Little does Joey know. Hey, Joey, you got a guy here. Talk Swahili. I know some Swahili. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hey, Let me look at my dick. Yeah, that's the way he pulls that spear out of his back. You try to talk about my language? You try to talk about my language? Hello. Hello. How do you say hello in Swahili? Did you really say he pulled a spear out of his back pocket? Dude, hey. Swahili. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm not sure. Nigerian. Nigerian. Swahili, Swahili brother. I mean, they're more sure. Wow, wow. 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 you pull an AK-47. Yeah, I'll, 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 I will cap you. You pull out an AK-47 and a diamond. The original, the original, the original, the the original the gangsters <laughs> was from Nigeria. <laughs> Elbow what? Joey? Billy's the punching bag. I had to stitch Durant. Are you going to get it on camera? I had stitch his tape on the before. We were looking for somebody to like. Oh, look at him. He's setting it up. Just wait. Anthony, wait until he's completely not even looking. I want some hot girls around here, though, first. I want them to witness this. That's you. That's me. Yeah. Yeah, I like that right there. I said that backwards. I got dyslexic. She said, that's you. That's me. Yeah. That's how I said. I like that. That's Kevin. That's Kevin, yeah. And of course, Kevin uh, Ross? He, he brings a picture for Kevin Ross to autograph, and it's about Kevin, Kevin getting elbowed in the ass, Kevin. And the funny thing that's is, is Kevin? Kevin, yeah, yeah, yeah Kevin's like, says, I'm not going to sign Kevin. that. And then it's like, I'm going to sign that. Oh, it, it's with, no with no tattoos. But look, uh, uh, Anthony goes, that's not Kevin. And she goes, no, look, it says hey, Kevin right there. Dude, it looks just like it just looks just like Joe Silling. Well, you know how it is. Oh, my God. Hey, man, we don't all look alike, man. Come on! Why are you looking at it from a certain angle? It looks like Joey Verner. Oh, oh yeah, it's right I'm definitely not buying my Birkenstocks from you. <laughs> yeah, the back picture has a rear end on it. Yeah, it's a picture of Joey right there. Show it. That's actually oh, on the back. Yeah, Joey, you got a good, you got a good ass style. Right? Why is the boy recognizes me only from the backside? Where, 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 where is he looking? <laughs> Isn't that easy? Hey, man, I know, I know a good butt when I see one. You look. <laughs> Wait, is that, is that Chase? Well, who else brings you this type of entertainment except the MMA fight corner here, right? Tonight right. we're actually the Muay Thai fight corner. The Muay Thai, the Muay Thai, Muay Thai, Muay Thai, Muay Thai MMA fight corner. Muay Thai baby. fight corner. And we're going to say it again. We've said it 50 times for everybody with uh, the camera that, um, that our producer just threw around there. You can <laughs> face it this way. Aaron always coming and making everything great. Because Billy needs to be seen. And he needs to be seen. Not heard. Be seen <laughs> and heard and everything else. We want to urge everybody to come down. We want to thank you all for sitting in with us. Can you take your picture? Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the Angie Kwani brothers want to take some pictures with us. Wait a second. We're going to get some Facebook stuff. We're going to post yeah, Facebook dude, pictures. We're, we're Instagram whores. Insta Instagram. Are you really? Big, big no, time. No, yeah. no, I mean, not oh, more. The Instagram hoes? You just said the way Instagram you just said it. We get passed around like... Bitches. Yo, yeah, yeah. You're not <laughs> sounding good here. You're like, yeah, we're hoes. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my god. god. Did I, yeah. I thought I had bass in my face in my voice when I did Everybody, that. come down, join us. We're having a great time yeah. here tonight. We're the only thing we were missing. The only thing we were missing. As much as much as much as no, no, we're just missing alcohol. That's the only thing. Billy photo bombed it and ruined it. Are we taking pictures on the Instagram home? On air. We're Instagram. We're Instagram hoes. Let's see. All right. Can jump in? <laughs> uh, come on. What? Jump in. So everyone, you are seeing a live picture. It's favorite. Hey! Hey! 
That's that's my wig, that's my wigger from the West. <laughs> that's my wigger from the West. <laughs> hey, you better watch out though. <laughs> hey, this this guy. <laughs> hey, hey, you guys better watch out. He been trying to bang now. He got right. some some some. Yeah, I'm coming out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 bang it. Oh, dudes. <laughs> oh, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> you know he poured that out and <laughs> filled it up yeah, with the Yeah, no, there's straight liquor in there. Yeah. <laughs> are we still on? Hey, give me hey, Give me Are we still on? <laughs> I, 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 I think we're actually off the air. Right? Hey, are we off no the air? Favorite. No one's favorite. What? So we're off. So we're off now. Are we on U Street? Well, let's let's sign off. Let's so sign, sign off. off. Hey, hey, sorry for sorry for the off. last minute uh, uh, party going down here. We got the Injiquani brothers here. Whatever they're in the house, the party's going down. You're right. Hey, but you could have crashed the party. We're if probably, you're, we're if you're in Vegas, guys, come on down. Right. MS Fight Corner. That's fine. We want to see you. See you till next week. Come down. We're going to see. They're going to be here. They're not even going to. We don't even have to sign up because everybody's going to come join us in a little Thank bit. Thank you all. Thank you. God can, bless. Can you take, can you take one like that one, Mike? No. Hey, man. And your Kwani brothers. Who are you taking anymore? One more, one more, one more. Hey, Heidi. Who are you taking anymore? Turn the stream off. Right. Hey. Hello. <laughs> are you serious about loving my stomach?